Hello SimHub users, I'm starting a tutorial series here on the Dash Studio element within SimHub. SimHub's a really powerful piece of software that takes telemetry data from a lot of popular racing sims and even some flight simulators and allows you to do interesting things like external LED displays, shaker motors in your seat, like fans that would blow according to how fast you're driving, but what I'm going to be covering is the Dash Studio element in SimHub. That allows you to create and use dashboards when you are racing. The first video is just going to go over using pre-existing dashboards, but the bulk of the videos in the series are going to be the actual construction and making of the dashboards and everything that goes into that. If your sim hub doesn't look like mine, that's okay. It's just because probably I have this dark mode turned on under theme. I have this base dark profile. That's not the default. The default is the light profile. So if yours looks different, functionality will be just the same. So in the left-hand menu is Dash Studio. If you're just seeing the icons, the hamburger menu will populate not only the icon, but also the text with it. And you'll see that the Dashboards tab within Dash Studio lists all of the dashboards that you have installed. There are several that come pre-installed with SimHub, uh, the ones that were created by whatever here, the developer of the software, he's created a number of them. And I've downloaded a number uh, online. And these are arranged in this list with your two most recently used dashboards at the top and then they're alphabetical by the category that you've assigned them. So I have uh, my David's creations up here. I put an underscore there, so those would be on the top of the list. And then you can see we go alphabetically. By default, if a dashboard is created, it's going to show up in the uncategorized. So we have a lot here in the uncategorized section. Dashboards you can run by hovering your mouse over it and clicking that start button and that will bring a list of options. So windowed, the dashboard will appear in a window that you can drag around your screen and resize. It looks like this. So here's a dashboard running and I can resize that using the handles on the, the bottom right. On the top here, you have this first one is going to prevent you from seeing these hover over icons on the bottom left. Let me switch that setting again. You notice we have that little gamepad icon when your mouse hovers over that. These left and right buttons will move between the pages in a dashboard. One dashboard can have multiple screens. So we're looking at this Bosch DDU8 which has six screens. Many dashboards will just have one screen. And then you can also assign actions to these A, B, C, and D but we won't get into those now. And so if you're never using these overlays, you could click this circle on the top right and now when you hover your mouse over it, you won't see that anymore. Next one's going to full screen your dashboard. That's useful if you have a monitor that's dedicated to, to displaying a dash. Maybe you're running a triple screen setup with a fourth monitor above that. This makes sense to you. And the X button will close it. You can also have buttons on a dashboard itself that will do something if clicked. So that's windowed mode. You can also run a dashboard on a specific monitor and even on your phone or tablet. If I do that, I'm given a URL and a QR code and you can navigate to this from any other computer or a mobile device and that's going to display the dashboard on your mobile device. Really slick. There's also a SimHub application for Android, not for iOS and uh, that bypasses having to use a browser. You can just view your SimHub dashboards within this app and not have to rely on an internet browser. And also we have this Vocor and USB-D 480 screens. These are both USB powered screens that you can buy. They're, they're smaller screens. A lot of external displays are going to be powered, or not powered, but they're going to receive a signal through HDMI. And so that uses one of the outputs on your video card. The great thing about these USB screens, since they're lower resolution, they don't require as much bandwidth. And so through USB alone, those can power the backlight on them and display an image. I, in fact, have a Vocor screen on order that should be arriving soon. And I plan on mounting that above my uh, rim so I can have a little four inch display 
And so if I wanted to run this on that Vocor screen, I could click that. Also, uh, if you want to assign a dash to be a favorite, you can click on the white star. It'll turn it yellow, and that's useful if you're, you're never using any of these other dashboards besides your favorites. Then you can check this only favorites on the top right, and you will now only see those yellow starred ones. If I don't want that Bosch one in my favorites anymore, then I won't see that when I choose only favorites. Overlays are like dashboards, but you can display it directly on top of the SIM that you're running. The thing is your SIM can't be in full screen mode. It would need to be in windowed or borderless mode, but this is really nice. It can almost seem like your dashboards are part of the interface. Settings, there's a lot in here. I might get into this later. One interesting feature here is you can have the dash flash when the red line is reached. The red line is defined up here in car settings and it's defined by the SIM itself. So say it's uh, R factor two, you could set a red line percentage to be 94%. And then any time that you reach 94% of the RPM, max RPM of any car you're driving, then the entire dash will flash red with 76% opacity. So you'll still see the dash behind it. If this were 100%, then it's truly turning your dash red and you can't see anything behind it. If it's zero, then there would be no red color behind it. And you can also set that red line by car also, not just by SIM, but by car. And those are in the car settings up there. Volcor and USBD 480 is where you will set up your uh, screens, uh, like if it's flipped, and if you want the touchscreen on those enabled or not. A slick thing to do if you are running uh, one of these screens, or even just viewing the dashboard in a window, is to assign button presses on your wheel, or maybe a button box, that will do these two things. Show the next dash screen and show the previous dash screen. You can also do that here um, in settings if you're not using a Vocor. So uh, next and previous dash template, that will be the next dash that you have in your dashboards list. And then screens, that's going to be within a selected dashboard migrating to the next screens. And I showed you those actions, A, B, C, and D. Here's where you can assign a button press to do one of those actions for the dashboard. Maybe you don't want your dashboard to have the number of laps of fuel remaining on it because you're trying to conserve screen real estate, but you want your dashboard to have the ability such that if a button is pressed, then you're going to see flashed on the screen for a few seconds how many laps of fuel you have remaining. That can be done through dash actions. So that is an introduction to viewing and using dashes, and in future videos we'll get into the fun part, the creation of these.